and gals doing another episode of Dark Girl Chronicles. This is the start of season three. Um, this is the first episode of season three. And I decided that I was going to finally do something in the new year. Finally! So here I am. Um, <laughs> for once, I know there was a little streak going there for a while where my boyfriend was showing up in episodes, but... He's not in this episode. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I am like rather sick of seeing him on camera now. Like all before I could not get him on camera. And now like in the past, I don't know, maybe six episodes, he's shown up like four times. And I'm like, seriously? Like I couldn't get you on camera before. And now all of a sudden you're like, yay, camera. And I'm like, no. So, um... The new year has started. It's 2014 now, and, um, not much going on. Really not much going on. Um, the major thing that's going on with me is that, um, I gotta move home, finally. Um, my mom is, of course, not getting better, but, um, she was just like, so, you should come home now, and I'm like really? And she's like, yes, you should come home now. So I've been trying to get home and I was trying to have a job before I got there. And looks like I'm not going to have a job <laughs> when I get there, but it'll work itself out. Um, she's, she's got things set up so that, um, I'll have money and I have, once I pay all my bills, I will still have money left over. A good chunk of money left over. So that's worked out for the best. Um, I I have to quit my job. And um, it will be the first time in 10 years that I voluntarily like quit my job and didn't have something lined up behind it. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm... I'm trying to think positively about this because the end result is not going to be positive. She's going to die. So there's not really anything positive about it, but um she's 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 pretty much like just come home. So I'm going to come home. Um I don't know. The good thing here is that I will get home and I will have time to spend with her and um, I'll be home all day. Since I'm not working, I'm going to be home all day and I'm going to be taking care of her. Um, and, you know, doing the stuff that she wants to do and making sure she's comfortable. Because that's my main concern. Is she comfortable? Like, dying is not a pretty process. So, I want to make sure that she's comfortable and that she has everything that she needs or could possibly want um, until the end when she goes into hospice because she'd already said she wanted to go in hospice and she didn't want to die at home which is probably a good thing because I don't want her to die in the house because I plan to live there and <laughs> she said the same thing she was like nobody wants to keep living on in a house where somebody died <laughs> like, <laughs> like nobody wants to do that so um, I don't know. I don't know. It's not a, it's not a joyous occasion for me moving home. Not the joyous occasion that I had hoped it would be. But, um, I'm moving home. So, um, the other good thing is that my relationship with my boyfriend will no longer be long distance. Um, it will be, <laughs> it will be very short distance. He lives five minutes from my parents and that's where I'm going to be staying. I'm going to stay with my parents, um, because I will own that house when my mom passes away. So at least I will co-own the house. I should clarify. I will co-own the house. Um, but I, I'm not necessarily looking forward to living close to him i am but i'm not um on the one hand see we've known we've known each other long enough that me living five minutes from him is not that big of a deal like 
it's like, okay, so I live five minutes from you. Okay. Like, <laughs> like that's nothing new. Um, but the fact that we're dating now and we live five minutes from each other is what's new. And I'm kind of worried about that. Because, and I have said to him, I was like, look, I am not going to be one of those girlfriends. And you know the ones I'm talking about. The ones who don't know how to go home. And you like, can you please go home? Bitch, go home. Like, I'm tired of looking in your face. <laughs> You're working on my nerves. Go home. Like, I don't want to be that chick. I have been that chick. And I don't want to be that chick again. So, um... I told him, like, tops, at best, you're going to see me twice a week. And that's really, that's really pushing it. Like, I just, because I know that I will have a lot of time at home and I won't be doing things, I will have time to see him. And I know that he works. And so, um, like, I just don't want to be the clingy, obsessive girlfriend. Like, I don't like being that person at all. And I really, really, really suggest to people who are in relationships, don't be that person. Don't be that person. Because it looks really bad. It's not a good look. <laughs> okay. Um. So, I don't know. I'm just, I'm kind of like, I don't really want to be, Um. I really don't want to be that girlfriend. So, I plan to work on GI while I'm at home all day. Uh, grocery shop cook, um, play video games, probably, um, work on GI, <laughs> like, I know I said that, but that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing, so, um, that means I'll have less of an excuse to not do what I'm supposed to be doing, and I need to get it done, so, I don't have an excuse, I will be at home all day, so, um, and my mom was more or less like, yeah, you should probably do that, because, you need something to do. Like, you're going to need something to do. You've worked in your industry for, like, ten years. You're going to really need something to do. So, I very seldom was homesick or used sick days or anything. As a matter of fact, I can think of maybe five times total in ten years that I used a sick day for anything. Um, I just never got sick. And it, it had to be like an emergency or some pre-planned surgery or something like that where I used a sick day. Um, but I just, I'm looking forward to um, taking a break, actually, and sorting out what I want to do with the rest of my life. I'm only 32 years old, so I, <laughs> by all accounts, I still got a while to go here. <laughs> Minus some crazy, unforeseen ridiculousness, I have some time to go. <laughs> um, so the other thing, um, he and I, I, I wanted to show on camera what he got me for Christmas, and I guess I'll do that later. Um, I, I will show you guys what Brandon got me for Christmas. They're really awesome Mario earrings, and I said the last episode, um, that I was going to show them on camera. And I just. I didn't get up to get them. Um, and the bag is not over here. That I usually keep my stuff in. Nope. It's not over here. Damn it. Um, but. I He got me some earrings. And they're lovely. And I am in love with them. And with him. <laughs> I'm feeling better. And actually. You would think though. Like. I should have PMS right now. And I don't. I don't know. Um, things got pretty bad Friday. I mean, like, Friday, I got a freaking speeding ticket. It's the first time I've gotten a speeding ticket in four years. And it's my first one in North Carolina. I used to get them in South Carolina all the time because I sped. <laughs> I just sped all the time. So, um, I got a 200, it's, it's like $203. And I'm like, fuck, I don't have that kind of money. Who the hell has that kind of money just laying around? Like, <laughs> Seriously? And then the officer was like, well, I knocked four points. I, I knocked four uh, miles per hour off so that you could, you won't have to mandatory go to court. And I'm like, like you're doing me some kind of fucking favor. You could have just not pulled me and that would have been okay. <laughs> Everybody does fucking 50 down the street. 
Like, it's a street where it's like the speed limit down there is 35. No one does 35. They all do like 50. So, <laughs> yeah, like, he stopped me and it was a cop on a bike. Like a, like a motorcycle bike. And I'm like, God damn it. Nobody's got this kind of money. Fuck. <laughs> so, um, I got a speeding ticket. I overslept by like three hours on Friday. Um, so I was late getting to work. Because I was supposed to get up super early and go do day shift. Which means I have to be there. Well, I don't have to be there. But it would be nice to be there between like 9 and... I don't know, 10.45 or so. Well, I didn't get up until 1. <laughs> because I was up the night before working on my website. And so, and then I was just in a foul mood. And I just, I went to punch someone. So, um, and I had no gas in my car. I had like a quarter of a tank of gas. And it was just like, what the fuck else today? Seriously, what else? What else? So, um... But but I actually got my work done on time. I figured out how I was going to pay for the ticket. And um, I actually, because I went and paid my rent. Oh, and I got chewed out by my apartment complex owner because I hadn't taken my stupid ex-husband off my lease. And so, technically, they're like, oh, yeah, you could, you got to take him off of there. And I'm like... Really? So they're all like the guy who owns my apartment complex is just he's an ass to start with, but the guy was just like he just chewed me out about it and I was like, Really? What what else today? I just got a goddamn speeding ticket. Seriously, I don't need you on top of this. <laughs> I don't need you on top of it. Like, I don't need this shit right now. Really. Get out of my face. Either you're gonna do what you're supposed to do with this deposit or you're not. Like, so he had me fill out this thing. I had to fill out this form anyway to give them written notice that I'm leaving my apartment in uh, about a month and a half. And I have to tell them, you know, that I was like, just make the thing out to me and this is the address you need to send it to. This is my forwarding address. So that worked itself out too. He was slightly nicer after that because I was like, what do you need me to do? Do you need me to fill the damn thing out now and take him off? Because I will. I can do it right now. <laughs> like, don't yell at me and then tell me that I didn't do it right. And then don't give me an option to fix it. Like, fuck you, dude. So, yeah. So, um, I wound up getting all that fixed. And so, I guess it's okay. Um, I just, I'm so just tired. I got off from work earlier and I gotta pay bills too. Shit, I gotta pay bills. <laughs> I just remembered I gotta pay bills. Fuck. <laughs> this is why I want to move because I won't have to pay like rent and utilities at least for a little while while I'm living at home. My mom is just like, child, no, don't pay no utilities while you living here. All I need you to do is take care of me. <laughs> take care of me and like cook. <laughs> and I'm not a good cook, but she doesn't want to keep cooking, so. And I understand that, like, she's cooked, like, she knows how to cook, and she's a phenomenal cook, but she's like, I don't feel like fucking cooking, why should I cook? <laughs> she's like, I mean, I do gotta eat, I, despite the fact that I am dying, I do need to eat, so, um, but I told her, I was like, mama, don't even worry about that, I will handle the cooking, I know how to cook things, and since as though I'm home all day, I need something to do. Let me do it. So, um, I also told my boyfriend that, um, and I meant it. If he's hungry, come on over and get him something to eat. Come get him a plate of loving. <laughs> come get him a plate of loving. <laughs> you come get some of this good stuff. <laughs> oh, he gonna be all in that good, good. <laughs> I'm so terrible. Um, <laughs> I've been listening to way too much Beyonce right now. Just a little too much Beyonce. <laughs> so my cousin gave me that entire Beyonce album for free. And I was like, I love you. <laughs> and she was like, yeah, I mean, you need to get this album if you want it. You need to get it. And I was like, well, I mean, I guess. <laughs> like, I was going to buy it anyway. I was going to buy it because I wanted to support 
Beyonce and I rather like her music. So, like, people I really like and artists that I like, I will spend the money for your album because more than likely I'm going to like just about everything on the album. There might be a few tracks, give or take, that I don't care for. But, like, I'll listen to them if I'm sitting there. And it turns out this new album that Beyonce put out, this album is the business. Let me tell you something. Out of all the tracks on there, i say probably, like, maybe three or four that I don't really like. Like, I don't dislike them, but I, like, wouldn't put them on my iPod to play in the car. I have a few favorites, but um, I think probably my favorite is... Um, Drunk in love. <laughs> she be singing about that surfboard. <laughs> She's singing about that surfboard. I'm like, surfboard? <laughs> surfboard? <laughs> graining, graining on that wood. Surfboard. <laughs> oh my gosh. I got unintentionally tipsy at the damn Longhorn the other night. When I was in Columbia with Brandon. And <laughs> I was trying to drink my drink slow. I had a Cosmo. What happened was I had a Cosmo. And I was trying to drink it real slow. Except that didn't happen. And I got slightly tipsy. And I <laughs> took a picture of us together. And I put it on Facebook. And the caption that I put was. Um, I had a little too much to drink at this point. Um surfboard surfboard because <laughs> he was looking at me like seriously what, what's wrong with you and i'm like i'm drunk possibly <laughs> i'm a little tipsy I'm a little tipsy and you smelling good come in <laughs> i was like why you smell so good right now why you smell so good <laughs> I didn't say that out loud. I was thinking it, but I really wanted to say it out loud. I was like, why do you smell so good? <laughs> and you know I can't to like mess with you right now. You know I can't mess with you. And it's going to be a whole nother month again before I see you. God, you smell good right now. <laughs> My boyfriend smells really good. Like, He smells really good. I just want to be like, why do you smell so good all the time? Um, he bathes regularly, and he uses, like, body, he uses that Axe body spray shit, which I'm not sure quite how I feel about that just yet. I'm not sure how I feel about it. My ex also used to use, not my ex-husband, but my, one of my other ex-boyfriends, um, <laughs> who I'm actually really good friends with now, he used to use Axe, and it, I, I didn't know how I felt about it. It was, I haven't decided. So, like, I just haven't decided. He used it, and Brandon used it when he was here. And I was like, what is that? And he's like, that's my ex body spray. And I'm like, see, I'm not even, like, I haven't decided how I feel about that just yet. So don't be all excited and triumphant like you've done something. Because I'm not sure how I feel, and that's not exactly attracting me right now. <laughs> You looking real fine in that sweater is attracting me, but not this body spray you just put on you. Um, but I don't know how I feel about that just yet. He just usually smells really good anyway because he uses um, Old Spice like body wash or something. He uses like that Old Spice stuff. Now that stuff smells good. Let me tell y'all, I would hump a tree if it had that damn Old Spice shit on it. Because, yeah. <laughs> when I smell Old Spice, I think about that fine ass Old Spice guy. Okay. Who, oh my gosh, he's so fine. Um, <laughs> But, I don't know how I feel about men's cologne. Like, I don't know how I feel about that. My granddaddy turned me against men's cologne. Oh my God. My granddaddy, when he was alive, my granddaddy was an Old Spice and a Brute man. He wore Brute cologne. He used Brute soap. And he used um, Brute, like, aftershave. And I remember, like, smelling that Brute. And he just put it on. And I'm like, granddaddy, what in the world? Granddaddy, why you got on this? No. <laughs> 
And my mom used to be like, why does my daddy have that on? God, is too much. But he used to, like, use all this brute crap. And so now if I smell brute, I immediately think of my granddaddy. God bless his soul. He's been dead for, like, seven years. But <laughs> now eight years, probably. Um, Yeah, eight years. No, not quite eight years. But he, I always think of my granddaddy when I smell brute. So, I don't know. I, I suppose it's a good thing that Brandon doesn't use brute. Because <laughs> then I would be thinking of my granddaddy. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> but, I don't know how I feel about Brandon and this body spray that he uses. I just want to be like, seriously, man, go take that shit off. Like, let me decide. Let me smell it first and decide if I like that. I mean, I understand it's the man that's wearing it. Like, it's not me that's wearing it. But if I got to sit up underneath you and smell you all the time, damn, I want to smell something good. <laughs> like, I want something that's going to be like, yeah. <laughs> Get that motor running or something. I don't know. Hmm. My ex-husband used to wear cologne, and then he just randomly stopped wearing it. And before, like, when he wore it, um, he wore something that his sister had bought him, and she bought it from, like, Walmart. She bought some imitation shit from Walmart, and it was nice. It smelled real good. Um, but then he just, like, randomly after we got married, just stopped wearing cologne, and I was like, what the fuck? Why did you stop wearing cologne? Like, that was random of you, but, um, <laughs> he generally smelled pretty good. I mean, he, he, he smelled, he smelled okay. Sometime he bought his this underarm deodorant that I just was like, oh god, no, stop, don't put that on, like, like that just too that's too much, it's too much. <laughs> but I I don't know. I'm used to I'm used to my men not wearing cologne too much, so I'm not sure how I feel about Brandon wearing cologne. I don't wear cologne because I don't wear perfume. Excuse me. I don't wear perfume because it's just too much for me. Like, it gives me a headache after about an hour. Um, and besides, I'm usually smelling the stuff that's in my hair. So, <laughs> like, the oil or whatever that I put in my hair. Like, I'm always smelling that. Especially after I wash my hair. I can smell it for, like, days. So, <laughs> and I mean, I wear and I smell my deodorant, like, all the time. So, I just don't need perfume i don't i feel like that would be too much so i don't know maybe i might get him some for valentine's day or something i might get him something that's not overwhelming that i feel like smelling and not you know puking or whatever because i can tell you guys that um if i pick it out it's gonna be something that's gonna make me think of sex <laughs> i'm gonna think of sex and it ain't gonna be sex panther <laughs> I've watched enough Anchor Band to know don't get Sex Panther. <laughs> oh, so, um, I don't know. Um, I might get him some cologne or something. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Um, so, speaking of which, I should also point out that tomorrow marks one year since my divorce hearing. Which, if you guys will remember, I actually chronicled on camera in season one of Dark Girl Chronicles. <sighs> Tomorrow being January 8th, or I should say today, because it is, in fact, after midnight, far after midnight. Um, it is today, um, the one year anniversary of my divorce hearing and my divorce becoming final. And in a year's time, I guess I could say that I, I mean, I know immediately and I can tell you guys immediately that um, I'm in a much, much, much better place than I was a year ago when um, I did that video and had to go to my divorce hearing and all. Um, I am in such a much better place than I was. Like... I feel better mentally and emotionally I'm in a better place and I'm happy. Um, despite Brandon's penchant for working on my nerves from time to time with ridiculous things, I, I'm, I'm super happy with him. Like, I mean, I can't, 
I can't sit up here and say I'm not happy. I am extremely happy with him, actually. And despite his penchant for ratchetness most of the time, I am very happy with him. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, I can't, I can't say that I'm not in a better place. Um, I wish I were not moving home for the reason that I'm moving home, but I'll be closer to him, I'll be closer to my family, closer to my mom, um, my friends, because all my friends live there. Um, I'm kind of sad about leaving my job here and leaving the people that I work with. Um, they're pretty good people, and my job has been so excellent about everything in the past two years. Like, I can't thank them enough for being excellent, because... My job has put up with a lot. <laughs> when your employee walks in one day and says, oh yeah, by the way, my marriage just imploded and I'm going to be leaving at some point because, you know, I want to move back home. And oh yeah, by the way, my parent is also terminally ill, so I don't know if I'm going to be driving back and forth or not. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, like, that's a lot to deal with and a lot to put up with. And I appreciate the fact that they put up with it. So... Um, yeah, I'm in, I feel like I'm in a much, much, much better place than I was, in, than I was a year ago, emotionally. Um, we are happy together. Uh, as far as I know, he's pretty happy with me. Um, he says he's happy with me, so, I mean, <laughs> I, my whole problem is I'm not even there enough for him to be unhappy with me. <laughs> Which is part of why I'm afraid of, of moving back home and you know, our relationship changing and all, because, and I told him, I was like, and that's the reason why I told him I didn't want to see him that much, because I don't want him, I don't want our relationship to change, because I've moved back, and now he's going to see me more, and then he's going to get tired of seeing me, because I told him, I was like, you're going to be tired of me, okay, <laughs> like, let me tell you something, you talking about, we, we're, we are talking about possibly living together at some point, and I was like, I know you miss me, but eventually you're going to get tired of me. Because I was like, let me tell you what happened to the last fucker that decided he wanted to live with me. <laughs> let me tell you what happened to him. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I I feel much better about our relationship. And obviously, I mean, we're like seriously dating. We're in a romantic relationship with each other. So, um, I just... I get, I, I'm like most women in that I am, I have fears about things and I am scared about stuff and I worry about things when it comes to my relationship. Like, I will never ever be super comfortable with dating him. Like, I will never get into that point where I'm just like, oh, I'm so comfortable with you and you're not going anywhere. No, he could pack up at any time and go, you know how I know that? Because my ex-husband did it. <laughs> With no warning whatsoever. So, yeah. And nobody is irreplaceable. Trust me. No one is. So, I know that um, it's very real possibility that one day he could wake up and change his mind. Because <laughs> I've already been through that once. So, I don't know. I mean, I love Brandon quite a bit. And, um, I... I'm crazy about this dude. <laughs> I guess I should just say it on camera and be done with it. Like, I mean, I'm crazy about him. I think about him all the time, and I miss him a great deal. Um, especially because we're 200 miles apart. So, um, I, I, I'm super crazy about him, and he knows how I feel about him. He knows how I feel. Or at least he should at this point. He should really know how I feel about him. Um... And yes, having a romantic relationship has changed how I look at him slightly. Um, <laughs> it has changed it slightly. And yes, being intimate has rather changed how I look at him. Like, it's, it's, it's a little weird to describe and I don't really want to get into it that much. I just, it's hard to, to really describe that because I'm still like the awkward one of the two of us. Like, I'm super awkward about things. <laughs> like, I'm super awkward about it. So, I'm still, like, looking at him like, I'm making that face like, 
uh, you want to do what? <laughs> I mean, I'm the one who's all like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's do it. And then, like, I'm just like, wait, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> and I blush a lot when I think about that. So, yeah, it's like, for me, it's just, it's still super new and super awkward. And I'm still thinking, oh, my God, this is my best friend. And he's, yeah, that's my best friend. What in the world? Oh, <laughs> he, he not looking at me like that. <laughs> Oh, he's not looking at me like that. <laughs> he's looking at me, but that's not what he's thinking about. <laughs> so, yeah, I have to, I still have to kind of sort of get used to that a little bit, but I mean, I'll get used to it and I'll be okay. So, um, that's all I really, really wanted to talk about. Oh, we did, in fact, go see uh, 47 Ronin, and it was pretty cool. I liked it. We actually saw it in 3D, and the 3D did not give me a headache. I was so surprised. I thought for sure I was going to like puke my brains out because it was in 3D, but um it actually wasn't bad. I actually could see what was going on and even when I wasn't wearing the 3D glasses, it did look kind of grainy and blurry, but not like a whole lot where it was unwatchable. I could actually still see pretty well what was going on. It's just yeah, I I see why they all want you to wear glasses and all that. But it was pretty cool like it was super cool. Um, and I liked it. I really like um, Keanu Reeves anyway. Because he's fine as hell. And I have long since thought Keanu Reeves was like so fine. <laughs> I have liked Keanu Reeves since probably after Bill and Ted. Um, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I didn't really watch Bill and Ted. But I liked him when he did Speed. I thought he was so fine in Speed. Um, but, um, yeah, I liked, I liked 47 Ronin. Um, it was pretty, pretty nice. Um, it had some really outlandish moments there. And also, Kerry Hiroyuki Tagawa is in it. And I think he is so fine. <laughs> I've been in love with that dude since 94 as well with, um, Rising Sun. The movie Rising Sun. Because I've also read the book. Uh, that Rising Sun was based on. Um, but yeah, I thought he was so fine. Um, but yeah, it was a good movie. I liked it. And I was happy I got to spend time with Brandon. Um, and <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> but it was fun. We got to spend time together. And um, it was it was nice. So um, I don't know. We'll see. Um, there was a trailer for Days of Future Past at the beginning of it. Uh, and I'd already seen that trailer. That's the full trailer, basically. I've already seen that. Um, I got a picture of myself in front of the Days of Future Past gigantic promo, which I will be using for Gaming Insurrection at some point because I plan to, talk, of course, talk about Days of Future Past and why it's my favorite X-Men arc. So... Um, they're also apparently planning to do Apocalypse, Age of Apocalypse, which is kind of strange. Um, but I don't know. I'm kind of excited about this. Um, I'm kind of excited about it. So I'm probably going to go see it, um, later when I'm in Columbia. I'll probably go with Brandon, um, just because we go to the movies, but the movies were expensive. Oh my god, it was $14 for each of us to get in. So that was $28 right there. Then you're paying a little extra for that 3D. So then we get up to the counter and the fucking popcorn and shit's like $19.75. So we wound up getting a little smaller package. The shit was still $18.75. It was $19.25 and the package that we got was $18.75. So... We wound up spending $46 just to go to the movies. And I was like, this is why we don't go to the movies right now. This is why I asked going to sit at home and we're going to watch this shit on Netflix from now on. Because this is some old bullshit. <laughs> Nobody should be spending $46 to go to the fucking movies. That's crazy. I remember when it was $5. $5 at best after like 6 like, that's crazy. I remember going to see 
is tell you how old my ass is. I remember going to see TMNT 2, Secret of the Ooze, at the movies. It was the very first movie I was allowed to see by myself. And I didn't pay, but like, I think I paid $5 to get in, and I had popcorn and drink. I actually stood in line and got popcorn and drink. I was so excited. I was a big girl, so I did get popcorn and drink. Um, I think I maybe spent like, maybe 11 bucks all together. I spent five to get in and like six seventy five or something for some popcorn and, and a drink. And I was set, okay? <laughs> like, I don't understand that shit. That was 20 years ago, though. And I'm like, seriously, though? Why in the shit is this 56? It was $46, not 56. I kept wanting to say it was 56, but it was $46. And I'm like, seriously, we went from six seventy five to 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 $46? <laughs> This is crazy, like, ridiculous, like, and the reason why I remember that, going to see TMNT 2, one, it was the first movie I was allowed to see as an adult, or as a kid, but on my own, so basically I was being a little preteen adult, or whatever you want to call me, but also, I remember I could afford to go on my allowance, like, I saved up my little allowance, and I was so excited, because I was like, I'm going to the movies in a couple of weeks. And my mom was like, okay. <laughs> she was like, you want to go see this? I mean, she was like, I'm not going to go sit through TMNT 2 with you now. I'm already sat through the first one. I'm not sitting through the second one. You can go see that by yourself. You're old enough now that you can do it. And I was like, cool. <laughs> And she was like, you got your money to go see it? And I was like, I'm going to save up my allowance then. And she's like, okay, fine. <laughs> you save up your allowance, then you can go. And so she let me go. But I remember saving up my allowance, and it was slightly affordable. Like, I got maybe like five bucks a week or so. Maybe five bucks a week. So I had plenty of money to go if I just, you know, bothered to not spend it on ridiculous shit like school supplies and books and posters and things at the book fair but I mean I had money like I could afford to go a nine-year-old kid could afford to go see this like now it's like seriously nah I'm not going to the movies anymore I'm gonna try to avoid doing that but I have to go for um days of future past I have to go see that at the movies I have to like that deserves to be seen on the big screen but still we're going before 6 o'clock. And we ain't going to no 3D shit neither. So, yeah. He better pick a good day because I've already told him we're going to go see it. Oh, and also the sequel to 300 comes out in March. So I told him we're going to go see that too. But, yeah, I was like, nah, you, should, you better pick a time before 6 o'clock and you better pick a good day. Because this is ridiculous. Ugh, I can't stand that. Anyway, so I guess I'm going to go now. Um... I'll see you guys later. Uh, I'm excited. New intro is starting with this episode. So, I don't know. And probably a new outro. I don't know. I might keep the same outro. I haven't decided. I think I did keep the same outro. Uh, I don't remember. I know that face I just made was really ugly. But, <laughs> y'all will be alright. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys later. And thanks for watching. Deuces.